Hey, Chandler Bolt here, founder of Self Publishing School. And in this video, I'm gonna walk through Self Publishing School's core values. So chances are you're in one of three groups. So number one, uh, you're an employee going through onboarding or you're a prospective employee uh, taking a look at working for the company. Number two, uh, you're a fellow entrepreneur uh, who's looking to make core values for your company and maybe you can glean something uh, from this video. Or number three, maybe you're a customer uh, and you're checking us out to see what we believe, what we stand for, uh, and see if we're the type of person that you want to be uh, doing business with. So either way, welcome, and we're going to dive into the five uh, core values we have here at Self Publishing School that we call uh, the SPS way. So what you're going to see here, um, this is a core values poster. Obviously, if you're an employee, uh, you're going to get one of these in your workspace. it would be printed out, something that you can see, hanging above your computer, all that kind of good stuff. We've got the five core values here as well as uh, our overall purpose. Okay, now I'm gonna go through these five core values uh, now. So number one is honesty and integrity always win. Number two is fail fast, fail forward, fail often. Number three is hard work and continuous improvement. Number four is everyone is responsible for facilitating change. And then number five is best is the standard. Uh, now I'm gonna walk through uh, some stories and uh, kind of some specific examples on each one. So let's start with honesty and integrity always win. Uh, this is the number one core value. So uh, we have honesty and integrity in everything that we do. So whether it's with customers, so with people we're working with, who we're making promises to, who we're helping, who we're serving with the business, or whether it's employees, coworkers, right? Uh, and the commitments that we make. Uh, so above all else, we will be honest and we will be in integrity with our commitments. Uh, and that's always gonna win. Uh, even when it's painful, even when it costs the company money, uh, and even when it makes you look bad, uh, because uh, you, you have to make sure that you're being honest. You know, sometimes it's, it can be painful. Sometimes it doesn't always help the bottom line. But we want to make sure that we're honest and, and uh, we have honesty and integrity in everything that we do. Now, a couple specific examples. Uh, so obviously in our commitments and our promises and our marketing, uh, in our guarantees and all those things, but then also, and this is kind of a secondary meaning to this, is integrity with our commitments to each other. So internally from employee to employee. So that means if you set a meeting and you say that you're going to be somewhere, you need to be there on time or early. Uh, it also means if you say you're going to get something done by a certain time, that you need to have integrity and live up to that commitment. And we're counting on you uh, to uh, deliver on that commitment. Our customers are counting on you to deliver uh, to that commitment. Or if you can't make that, uh, to reassign or uh, recommit to something. You know, you have to break that commitment, but you're very clear about it. You let people know ahead of time uh, that you're going to have to break this commitment rather than just no-showing a meeting or letting that, saying, hey, I'll I'll get this to you by Friday and then it never shows up. That's not the way that we do business. If you say that you're going to do something, you do it. You have integrity with those commitments that you make. Now, one of uh, the, the quotes that my dad taught me growing up that always stuck with me is that, that relates to this core value is he said, it takes a lifetime to build your reputation and a second to ruin it. Uh, all it takes is not being honesty or not being honest or not being in integrity uh, one big time and you can totally ruin this this reputation that you've built over a long period of time. So that's number one. Number two, fail fast, fail forward, fail often. Now I'm a firm believer, this is a big personal belief of mine, that you cannot learn without failing. Now a lot of people are hesitant to fail. Uh, and they don't want to look bad. They're scared of looking stupid. Uh, and this is actually probably one of the biggest adjustments when people adjust in the self-publishing school team is they realize just how much we mean this. Because a lot of companies will say, yeah, go ahead and fail. We encourage that. But then you fail and you get reprimanded or you get like the hammer brought down on you uh, for screwing something up. For us, we'd rather you fail and be decisive than freeze up and not make a decision. Okay, so I'll backtrack a couple and then I'm going to give a couple points on this. So again, without failure, there is no learning. Well, the early Facebook motto, uh, which I really liked, is done is better than perfect. This is something we teach our students in the writing process uh, is get a rough draft done because that's better than a perfect rough draft that's not finished. The same goes for tasks. The same goes for assignments inside self-publishing school. So done uh, is better than perfect. You cannot learn if you don't fail. So I've had tons of failures in my life and tons of failures, especially in my entrepreneurial journey. Uh, so I believe that's the only way you learn because when you fail, you get feedback. So fail fast, fail forward, fail often means making decisions versus freezing up uh, and not being afraid to fail. So we test things and those tests fail 
all the time. But if you get in into the uh, the company and you're and you're making decisions and you're failing a lot, then that means that you're going to learn faster than anyone else, uh, and that means you're going to grow uh, per- personally, professionally. Like uh, that's the only way that you're going to grow, and that's the only way that you're going to learn. So once you get in the saddle, don't be afraid to make mistakes, and you'll probably hear this come up multiple times. Where again, this is probably one of the hardest things that people learn when they get into the company is they say, "Hey, what do you think I should do about this?" or "What do you think I should do about this?" And the answer is often what do you think? What do you intend to do? Which you'll see in another video, kind of our philosophy on that. Uh, but what do you intend to do? And then make the decision. And I'd rather you make that decision and, uh, and fail and learn uh, versus have me spoon feed you or your manager or anyone else uh, at the company speed f- spoon feed you uh, the answers and you not learn. Okay. Moving into core value number three, hard work and continuous improvement. So what this means uh, is we work very, very hard uh, at self-publishing school. We also have a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, I'm wearing a shirt with tacos on it (laughs) Uh, and our core values video. So you kind of get the picture there. Uh, We have a lot of fun, uh, uh, but we also work very hard. We work hard and we work smart. Okay. Now, this is not the kind of place where, uh, you know, we're just working to punch the clock. We work until the job gets done. So a lot of times that means 50, 60 hour weeks, uh, but that also means when we're off, we're off. So it's kind of a work hard, play hard environment where we're going all on. But then when you, when you're taking vacation, uh, any of those things, like you're expected to fully disconnect, uh, so that when you're on, you're on. And when you're off, you're off. And then for the continuous improvement piece, uh, we are always making things better. So whether it's you personally, whether it's professionally, whether it's our products, whether it's our marketing, whether it's anything that you're working on uh, in this team, uh, we're going to be making it better. And the moment that we stop trying to make it better is the moment that we throw in the towel uh, and we we just quit. Uh, Because if we're not making things better, and it's my belief, if you're not growing, you're dying. Uh, So we're constantly improving things and we're working hard at that. Number four, everyone is responsible for facilitating change. One of the things that drives me crazy uh, is the quote, uh, hey, that's just the, all, that's just the way we've always done it. You, you'll not find that here. Uh, and that's why we say everybody's responsible for facilitating change. Because if you see something that could be done better, you're responsible for changing it. Or you're responsible for, at a very minimum, screaming loudly or raising your hand and saying, hey, there's a better way to do this. Uh, So it's very easy to get caught up in, oh, maybe someone else can fix this or maybe someone else can make this better. Everyone is responsible for facilitating change. So again, if you don't like something, change it, make it better. Uh, Whatever you do, don't complain about it (laughs) Uh, because we're going to give you the power and we're going to give you the autonomy to actually do something about it. Uh, and to make it better. Uh, and, 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 and one of the best things about coming on to uh, the company and this initial stage when you're going through onboarding is you have fresh eyes. So you're thing, seeing things through a new perspective. And myself and a lot of other people on the team, there's probably a lot of things that we're doing that we haven't stopped to evaluate. Why do we do it this way? In a long time, because it's just routine, right? It's habit. And you coming onto the team, obviously, if you're an employee or, uh, you, you know, if, if, you're, if you're one of those three groups, uh, if, if you're coming on the team, then you have fresh eyes. And I want you to point out just every possible time that you see something that could be better uh, and we'll work with you or we can assign that out to someone else to make it better. So everyone's responsible for facilitating change. And my, my favorite story on this is I was reading an Elon Musk uh, biography They were talking about Tesla. They had this big, important project, this big, important deadline, and they were just working around the clock. And, you know, if you know anything about Tesla or about Elon Musk ran companies, they work very, very hard. Uh, It's like kind of like self-publishing school, except even more extreme. Uh, And so they were working. I mean, it was like late at night. And one of the engineers was on the floor with the manufacturing people. So uh, that's a lesson within itself. He's down there with his frontline employees at like 9 p.m. on a Friday or something like that. And they're working to meet this deadline. Now, the guy's working on, on the car and he bends over, he's welding, he bends over, his glasses fall off into the weld and it, and it ruins his glasses. Now, he doesn't have an extra pair of glasses. The guy's pretty frustrated. He's been working hard. He's a little bit burnt out. Uh, and he just starts, I think, you know, like either cussing up a storm or just complaining or something like that, right? Uh, and little does he know that Elon Musk is around the corner and he hears him. <laughs> uh, now, the next day he shows up for work uh, and he gets a slip from his assistant. Now, this is not a firing slip. It was actually a slip uh, to get LASIK. Pretty awesome. Right now, 
what does that have to do with this? Everyone is responsible for facilitating change. Well, if there's something in your way, we need you to let us know because this, I just love the fact that he did that. Elon said, "Hey, that's this is in my people's way. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay and I'm gonna get it out of their way. Uh, so I'm gonna facilitate this change for them and I'm gonna de-hassle." Uh, and kind of give them a clear line of sight that they can work towards. Uh, so I hope to be able to do that for you. I hope that your manager is able to do that for you. Uh, and obviously, uh, we can't do it unless you help us do it for yourself uh, by just bringing those things to our attention. Uh, and that's really important that we facilitate change and make things better. Now, you're going to notice all of these kind of interweave together. Like everyone is, res everyone is responsible for facilitating change directly relates to continuous improvement. Uh, you know, there's kind of a, a, a lot of a, a mix here. Moving into the home stretch, this is the final core value, the fifth and final core value. It's uh, best is the standard. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means a couple things. And number one is that we are the best in everything that we choose to focus on. So we're not going to go into a vertical. We're not going to create a product. We're not going to uh, create anything unless it's the best. Uh, and, and so if we create a blog post, it should be the best on the internet for that topic. It should be the best post on the internet. If we create a product, it should be the best uh, that, that exists. And so best is the standard. Now at the same time, we don't want to compare ourselves to others. So I'm really big on your personal best. So give me your personal best. And if you're directly reporting to me, I'm going to manage you accordingly. So I'm going to say, hey, here's what your personal best is. And then I'm going to manage you towards that. So we're always looking at, hey, how can we give our personal best and do the absolute best uh, that we can personally do? And then not compare to others. So if we were to compare ourselves to publishers, for example, it's a very antiquated industry. Uh, it's a very antiquated process. We would lower our bar of excellence. It would lower to the, the standard that publishers set. If we were to compare ourselves to other internet marketers, we would lower ourselves uh, to the standard because they, a lot of, uh, a lot of those folks don't deliver uh, and don't perform to the standard that we do. So we're all about, hey, finding our personal best and delivering to that standard. What's your personal best? What's the SPS personal best? And that's the standard that we're going to set. That's the standard that we're going to work towards. And uh, one of the team members recently had a revelation, which I thought was uh, pretty interesting, which was that that standard is always rising. Because if we are continuously improving, then we're going to continuously raise the standard. And also our competitors are going to rip us off, and then we're going to have to keep raising the standard. right? So that's a never-ending quest uh, towards continuous improvement, which obviously you know is one of our other core values. And the final story I'll give on this, and then I'll wrap uh, the video is when I was growing up uh, in high school and I'd get a report card and I'd bring it home to my parents and this was kind of what it really set home for me. So I'd bring it back and maybe sometimes I'd have some B's and C's, right? Uh, and my parents were a little bit strict uh, and I'd bring these grades back and, and they'd say, what's, what's going on here? You got some B's and C's. Uh, what's going on with that? Uh, and, and I'd say, well, you know, hey, you know, so-and-so, they had C's and their parents not mad. Why are you so mad at me? What's wrong with this? Uh, and I just remember my mom and my dad saying, I don't care what their parents said. I don't care what their parents are holding them to. I know what your personal best is, and this is not it. So I don't care what anyone else is doing. I don't care what anyone else made on that test. This is not your personal best. I know that you didn't give this your personal best. Uh, therefore, I'm not happy. <laughs> All right? Uh, so I'm, I will be happy. Even if you, if you get C's, and I know it's your personal best, I'm going to be happy with that. Uh, but if, if you're not giving your personal best, then I'm not going to be happy. So that's kind of a story that illustrates this core value. Best is the standard, uh, and that's what we strive for. Your personal best and then our personal best as a company. Uh, so there you have it. Those are our five uh, SPS core values. You memorize them. You'll know them by heart if you're on the team. Uh, number one, honesty and integrity always win. Uh, number two, fail fast, fail forward, fail often. Number three, hard work and continuous improvement. Number four, everyone is responsible for facilitating change. And then number five, best is the standard. Now, you're going to get hired on these. You're going to get promoted on these. You're going to get publicly or privately recognized on these. You're going to get reprimanded based on these. You're going to make decisions based on these. So obviously, print out your core value poster. Uh, this is going to be top of mind. Uh, and you'll see in Slack or anywhere that we're communicating, we're communicating around uh, these core values uh, to make sure that you know they're always top of mind and they're kind of like the North Star uh, for our decisions and for us as a company. So uh, if you're an employee, uh, 
Uh, I'm excited for you to live out these, and we are you. We already recognize that you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been hired uh, in the first place. Uh, but keep these printed out, uh, that sort of thing. If you're thinking about working for us, uh, then hopefully this is exciting for you and these are values that you have. If so, then I think you'd be a great fit here. If not, then uh, probably not. Actually, definitely not. Uh, and then obviously, if you're a customer and this is something that's important to you is that the people that you work for or work with uh, share these values, uh, then hopefully we'll be able to do business together. And then if you're an entrepreneur, I hope that you found this helpful. Uh, and so you can kind of create your own version of core values uh, for your company. Obviously, they won't be ours, uh, but they'll have a unique flavor uh, for you. So hope you, I hope you found this helpful and I'll talk to you soon. See ya.